want to say this. If you're a visitor here today, come on, can we give an elevation welcome to any visitors? If you're a visitor here today, you are in a great church. You're in a church where you're going to be loved, cared for, where your faith is going to grow. So please, I invite you to join our family. A little bit about myself. My name is Bronson. Uh, I'm 45 years of age, and you probably look at me and say, he doesn't look a day over 21, but uh, I'm 45 I've been married to my wife, Gabby, for 23 years, and we have three children, Joel, who is 16, uh, a son who is 13, his name is Ethan, and then we have another son who is Roman, and uh, he is six, he's our blessing baby, right? You know what I mean? Uh, Yes, some of us know what we mean, some of you don't, okay, we can explain it another time. Anyway, that's my family, Uh, not the llamas, the humans, that's my family. And we've got another picture, I think. Um, That's the picture my wife prefers, you see. That's the Instagram light, right? The highlight reel photo that you have. So that's that's my family. I grew up as a pastor's kid in the wild, wild west of Melbourne, in the western suburbs. And we we were in an area called Sunshine. Uh, It it used to be called Scumshine. So you know, that's, that's a real place to live. And so grew up there as a pastor's kid. Love God, love the church, but I said this to God, if there's one thing I never want to be, it is a pastor. Uh, I said to God, anything but a pastor, well, here I am, God does a work on our hearts, right? Has anyone, has anyone had God do a change in your heart over the years? God changed my heart, and here I am, my wife and I, we've been pastoring for six years now at our Melbourne West location, and it's been an amazing journey. And there's been highs and lows. Uh, We were believing for many years for a building. We moved into our building in uh, February 2020. Does anyone know what happened in 2020? One month later, we go into lockdown. Melbourne lockdown too, right? Uh, uh, Two years and so, but God is good. Can I say to you, no matter what happens, no matter the circumstance or the situation, God is bigger. Come on, He is greater. He is bigger than anything we might face. So can we give God some praise this morning? Come on. He's worthy of our praise. And I'm excited about the future of Elevation. Uh, Next year, 2023, our pastors, Miles and Bonnie, step up, transition in to be the senior pastors, the lead pastors of Elevation. And I'm so looking forward to that. I believe we're going to step into a new season, fresh anointing, a new season of new direction and fresh vision, and I'm so looking forward to that. Uh, We're actually in a series called Vision. Can you say it with me? Vision. Vision. Call one more time, Vision. Vision. Series called Vision, and what we're looking at is the vision we have for elevation. Our key verse is Habakkuk 2.2. It says, write the vision and make it plain on tablets, and that he may run who reads it. What is vision? Vision is a clear picture of of a preferred future. So that's what we've been doing during this vision series. We've been clarifying, we've been reiterating, we've been talking about what the vision is so that we can what? So that we can run with the vision that God has for us as a church. And so it's about clarifying that vision. What is the vision of Elevation Church? Like why do we do what we do? Why are we here today on a Sunday? I mean, you could be anywhere else. Now, today's not the greatest of days. I think I brought the Melbourne weather with me. Uh, But, you know, but why are we here today? This is why we're here. And Pastor Miles shared in weeks one and two. We are here to multiply healthy local churches to transform our city. Come on, we are here to see the church grow, to multiply, to transform our city. The thing is this, though. Healthy churches are the byproduct of healthy people. So if we want a healthy church, we need to be healthy ourselves. So we want to come alongside you and help you to grow healthy spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. We want to come alongside you. But we need to know this. It's not just about us. It's not just about you. We also have an obligation. There is a great commission to go outside the four walls, to go out to reach people out there that need to know Jesus Christ. Because why? Because we want to transform our city. See, there's people who are lost 
and hurting and who are oppressed. And when we bring Jesus to them, we bring freedom, we bring healing, we bring deliverance to their lives. How do we do that? We do that through our mission, which is creating environments that inspire intimacy with Christ, relationship with others, and influence in our world. So we work hard to create environments that foster intimacy with Christ, relationship with others, and also influence in the world out there. Here's what we need to know, though. Our mission and vision, they're not just a Sunday thing. They're not just a thing that we do at church. They're not just something we do at life groups during the week. There's something for us to embrace and to grab a hold of and to lean into for every part of our lives. At your home, in your workplace, at school or university, amongst your social group with people that you meet with and you do life with, your whole life, we are to create environments. Last week, we had Pastor Marty here. I think some of you might know Pastor Marty. He was part of this congregation. Amazing man of God, great family, his wife Rachel as well. And he shared on uh, the values that we have as Elevation. And values are the characteristics, they're, they're the culture. They are the distinctives of a person or a people, an organization or a church. And he talked about uh, some of the values of Elevation. And what are the values of Elevation? They're who we are. They're what make us unique. They're what make us distinct from another church. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with another church down the road, but this is what makes elevation, elevation. This is what gives us our flavor. These are our values that we lean into. So this is what you join when you become part of elevation. Pastor Marty talked about two of those values. He talked about how we are authentic and we are adventurous. And today I get the privilege to finalize our series and share on the last two values, which are we are fun and we are spirit-led. Come on, let's just pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Your anointing is in this place. We want to encounter you, God. We haven't come here to play church. We've come here to encounter Jesus Christ. So I thank you we do that in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said? Come on. Everyone said? Amen, yes. Hey, I want to let you know something today. I'm the kind of pastor who, if you want to say amen while I'm preaching, I'm totally cool with that. If you want to say preach it, I'm happy for you to do that. If there's something I say that you don't like, uh, tomorrow you can send an email to Ben. We don't need to talk about it right now, okay? So, so you know, we can, we can be excited here today. Okay, first value number one, we are fun. We are fun. Uh, a mother went to wake up her Sunday one, uh, her son one Sunday morning for church. She knocked on the door and she said, son, it's time to wake up. And the son said, hey, I'm not going to church today. I don't feel like it. And the mom said, why don't you feel like going to church today? And he said, I'll give you two reasons. First reason, they don't like me. Second reason, I don't like them. Mom said, okay, fair enough. She said, well, I'm going to give you two reasons why you will go to church. Reason number one, you're 47 years of age. Reason number two, you're the pastor and you're preaching. Come on, we can laugh. Sorry, that's a dad joke. I apologize, forgive me. But I want to say this, it's okay to laugh. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to enjoy life and to enjoy church. See, God created humor. He created laughter. He created us to have fun. What does the Bible say? about laughing, about happy, having fun, about being happy. There's so many verses, but I just picked out a couple today. First verse, Ecclesiastes 18, uh, 8, 15. This is Solomon. He says this, So I recommend having fun because there is nothing better for people in this world than to eat, drink, and enjoy life. Who likes to eat, drink, and enjoy life? Come on, you can put your hand up. You don't have to be a closet fun person. <laughs> eat, drink, and and enjoy life. I was at um, Italian Street Kitchen last night, the restaurant there. I was enjoying life, eating food. It's good. In Melbourne, we love to eat food. My wife's Italian. I put on 10 kilos in the first year of marriage. It was like the Michelin man. I've got a twin brother. He didn't put any weight on. It was like a after and before shot right in front of your eyes in real life. Eat, drink, and enjoy life. That way they will experience some happiness along with all the hard work God gives them under the sun. Life can be hard, but life can also be enjoyed. There can also be fun. Proverbs 15, 13. A happy heart 
makes the face cheerful. A happy heart makes the face cheerful. It shows on our countenance, but heartache crushes, crushes the spirit. So in reading these verses, and there are many, many others, go home, look them up today. In reading these verses, I come to the conclusion that God is okay if we have fun in our lives. He is okay with it. Here's the thing, though. Here, here's the conundrum. Here's the, here's, the, here's the issue. If we were to leave here after church today, if we were to go down to Castle Hill Towers, and I was there last weekend, I, went to saw, I saw a movie. If we were to go there and we were to do a survey, pick 10 people, maybe 100 people, random people from uh, all those people who are there shopping, doing whatever they are doing, and we were to ask them this question, do you think Christians are fun? What do you think the answer would be? I would hazard a guess that most people would say, no, I don't think Christians are fun. Now, not if you come to hills, elevation. Come on, we're fun. But they would say that today. And, and i got to ask the question, why do people think that? Here's why I think people say that. Too many people think Christianity is boring because too many Christians are boring. I just triggered a few people here this morning. Too many people think Christianity is boring because we, unfortunately, have been boring people. See, if church is full of dead, serious, boring people, I am out of here. And like, I'm a pastor. I don't want to be here. And can I tell you this? Your friends and your family, when you tell them about Jesus, but they look at your life and it's boring, it's dead, you're always complaining. They're like, I don't want anything to do with that Jesus if that's what following Jesus means. God has called us to be fun. Now, I want to clarify, I, I, want, to, I want to make this clear. Uh, we take what we do seriously, very seriously. At Elevation, we take the message of Jesus very serious. And we take people's eternity seriously. I mean, it is literally life or death. They're not just physical, spiritual. We're talking about people's eternity. So we take it seriously, but we don't take ourselves too seriously. Hey, it's okay to laugh, joke. We have fun. It's okay to, to you know, tell a joke every now and again, enjoy each other's company. I love how Ben and, and Michael were talking about that earlier. We enjoy each other's fun, commiserations on the eels, uh, go the Melbourne storm. <laughs> oh, I got a response. At least I got a laugh. <laughs> Expecting to get booze. But at, at elevation, we are fun. And, you know, at, at my church, you know, it's, you know what? It's even okay to make fun of each other in a nice Christian way, right? Yeah? Like at my church, I had this thing where I sometimes pronounce words wrong. And so at my church, there's like this running tally. How many words does Bronson get wrong when he's preached today, right? Mispronounce them. And so they tease me about that. And so they're allowed to, you're not. Okay? I don't know you well enough. No, you can, you can tease me if you want to. Chuck Swindoll says this, laughter is the most beautiful and beneficial therapy God ever gave humanity, granted humanity. You know, medical science is discovering that laughter is one of the key ways to release the feel-good chemicals of dopamine, oxytocin, uh, endorphins. Do we want those feel-good chemicals? Right? They've discovered that as one of the greatest ways to release those chemicals that bring stress relief and enhance our physical and emotional and mental health. We're just discovering this. But God, surprise, surprise, knew this all along. In fact, he said it in his scriptures. It says this in Proverbs 17, 22, A cheerful heart is good medicine. Maybe today if we need some cheer, we need to take some of that medicine, which is to have some laughter in our lives. Now, I want to be authentic today. I want to be real with us this morning. Sometimes in life, we're not in that place of cheerfulness right? Sometimes in life, it can be hard. It can be tough. Has anyone ever noticed that? Right? Life is just me. Has anyone ever noticed that life can be tough? 
things can happen. Things can come our way. If you haven't experienced that, I don't want to prophesy over you, but you probably will experience it. Someone will let you down. You won't get that promotion. You'll get that report from the doctor you didn't want to hear. Life can be tough. Sometimes life is not fun. It's, it's, it's sadness. It's pain. It's hurting. Come on, authentic church today, right? It's all those types of things that we might face and we might not be in a place where we want to be, you know, necessarily cheerful. And why do I say this? Because I have experienced this in my life myself. Lost, heartbreak, believing for something that didn't happen. I've experienced this in my own life. And so today, if you are in that place, when we say that we have fun, that doesn't mean that we are saying to you, you need to put on a fake happy face. That doesn't mean that I am telling you today, hey, just just do some fake laughter, right? I'm not asking you to put on a facade this morning. But here's what I want to ask you. Here's what I would sincerely encourage you to do. Here's what I want to do with, you know, all love and compassion. I want to ask you to lean into the Scripture and what God says. When we're facing those seasons, see in James 1, 2, it says this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, Whenever you face trials of many kinds. I don't have it up on the screen, but in John 16, 33, Jesus says, in this world, you will face tribulations. So today, life is going to throw you curveballs. You're going to face trials. We're going to walk through valleys. We're going to have the night come. And it's going to seem maybe like it's an extended period of time. But I want us to look at what Jesus says and Luke 6:21 he says blessed are those who are hungry now for they shall be satisfied but this next part blessed are those who weep now for they shall laugh and maybe you're in a season today of weeping that is okay that's you're in a place today a church where people will come alongside you and love you and care for you during that season. But I want to say this today. Jesus says, in fact, I don't say it. Jesus says, you may be weeping today, but there is coming a time where God's joy, where God's happiness, His laughter will be upon upon your life. Whatever life might throw at us, good or bad, we can have an attitude of joy. We can choose happiness. We can lean into being fun. Here's my question today for us, Hills. A question for you, a question for myself. Imagine someone was to spend the day for you, spend the day with you from the time you got up to the time you went to sleep. I wonder what they would say about you at the end of that day. Would they say something along the lines of, wow, that person I spent time with, they are amazing, they were full of life, it was amazing to be around them. I feel so, I feel like my cup is being filled up. I, 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 would, I would love to do another day with that person. Or would they perhaps say something along the lines of, OMG, I'm glad that day's over. Like, I'm just so drained now. It's so serious. Everything is so, you know, every, everything is such a, a drain. It's such a drag on life. Today, let's embrace our value of being fun. The keys to come, that'd be great. Number two, we are spirit-led. Say it with me. We are spirit-led. Come on, one more time. We are what? Spirit-led. Uh, my youngest child, Roman, uh, who I said is six, he started school this year. Uh, foundation, uh, we call it in, in Victoria or, or, or um, um, prep. He started school and he is learning how to read and write. Any parents here this morning? You remember when your children were reading or writing? Or maybe your your kids aren't old enough to do that yet. You'll experience that soon. It's amazing to see someone who can't read start to read. Well, when I was younger, uh, you may not believe this, or maybe you do believe this. I was a big nerd, and I used to read a lot. In fact, my brother and I, we used to get on our bikes and take our bikes down to the library. Some of you are too young to even know what a library is. It's like Amazon, but you have to go there in person, Okay. So we used to go to the library and read books, and I can't wait to introduce my son, Roman, to the literary classic books, the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Come on, anyone know what I'm talking about? Come on, let's give the Choose Your Own Adventure books a clap this morning. Literacy classics. 
And if you don't want to choose your own adventure book, is some of you are like, the eyes have glazed over. Don't know if that's to choose your own adventure or the message, but, you know. And you, what's to choose your own adventure? Basically, it's a book where you read it, but you don't read it from start to finish. You read sections at the time, and then you finish a section, and then you get the option to choose where you go next. Choose your own adventure. So let's just say you're reading a book, and maybe you're at the, uh, the Royal Sydney Easter Show. Did I get that right? The Royal Sydney Easter Show. And you're there, and it will, it'll say something like this. After you finish the section, it'll say, go to page 23 if you want to go on the Ferris wheel. Any Ferris wheel people here today? No. Okay. Then it says, uh, go to page 53 if you would like to mortgage your house, sell off your car to buy some show bags for your family. <laughs> right? It's expensive. Then it says, uh, turn to page 93 if you want to go see the farm animals. It's a choose your own adventure. You get to choose where you go next. Well, as children of God, there are moments in our life where it's not about us choosing our own adventure. It's actually about us leaning into and being spirit-led about God's adventure for us. God's adventure for us. What is spirit-led? Being spirit-led is to intentionally listen for and make room for God's Spirit to direct our paths. Being Spirit-led is living our normal lives and making allowances for God's Holy Spirit to bring divine interruptions into our day. We see in the Bible, this illustrated in Acts 16, 6, Paul on a missionary trip. says this, And then they went through the region of Phrygia, and Galatia, see, we're going to have some of these words now that I mispronounce, <laughs> being forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had came to Messiah, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Messiah, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there. And he said to them, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he, we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Paul was a preacher, itinerant minister, goes around visiting people, planning churches. He's got people to see. He's got contacts, churches he wants to meet. That's what he does. I want to tell you today, you've got your life, what you do. Maybe today you're, you're a parent. Maybe you're raising your children. You know, you've got to make the lunches, drop them off at school, read the books to them, get their uniforms ready. Maybe today you're a business owner. You've got, to, you've got staff, you've got to manage, you've got, you know, budgets, profit and loss, balance sheets, contracts you've got to do. Maybe today you're at school, university, you're doing postgraduate studies. That's your life, right? We live our normal lives. We do these things. Paul is doing that. And then along the way, God's Spirit comes. He says, hey, uh, you're going this direction, I now want you to go this direction. The Spirit comes to lead him somewhere else. It's a divine interruption. And we often think the way that God is going to divinely interrupt our lives is going to be something big, something huge. And so we're, we're looking for the thunder and the lightning. Or we're looking for the signs and the, the vision, like right in front of our eyes. Or we're looking for the prophecy or something along those type of ways. And, and I have had moments like that where, God, where I was going down this way and God said, hey, I want you to be a pastor. And I said, anything but a pastor, God, but here I am today. And it, it can happen like that. But I have found this. And, and I'm going to say that possibly you have found this as well. The way that God has divinely interrupted my life mostly is in simple divine interruptions a big spirit led looks like this it's it's spending more time with someone than you originally planned to because you felt God prompting you to back at uh, Melbourne in, in our church we we lease our facility and uh, we have a landlord and he's been extremely difficult for us to deal with it's so so difficult Lindsay knows she knows some of the journey it's extremely difficult to deal with and he's got an opinion about everything. And so some of the things we wanted to do, he said, no, you can't do that. You can do this. And so recently we were at the church and we were talking about some things we were going to do. And he had to be there to sign off on a few things. And I had somewhere to be after this meeting. I had somewhere to, to go. I had things to do in the afternoon, right? You know, we're busy in life. And as I was finishing the meeting with him, he says, hey, Bronson, can I take some of your time? I want to have a chat with you. 
I'm like, here we go. And uh, this guy, he can talk. Like, he can talk the hind leg off a dog. Like, he just loves to chat. I'm like, here we go. This is an hour wasted of my time. Uh, I've got somewhere to be. And I felt God say, hey, Bronson, take some time to speak to your landlord. And so I'm speaking to the landlord, and we're doing all the favalities, you know, hey, how you been, all that kind of things, the catch-up. And then he got to what he wanted to speak to me about. He said, hey, Bronson, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about my daughter. Uh, we're, we're, we're not reconciled at the moment. We're, our relationship is broken. And uh, there's hurts that she has. There's hurts that I've got. And it's really breaking me up on, in, inside. And I just want to be reconciled with her, but she doesn't want to. And I don't know what to do. I don't know who to turn to. I don't have anyone I can speak to. But then I remembered I've got you that I could speak to. And so he shared with me. And so I was able to speak with him. And I was able to pray for him in that moment right there and then and speak to him. See, that would not have happened if I had not allowed God to say, hey, listen for my voice, be spirit-led. See, I could have said to him, I got somewhere to be. Being spirit-led looks like this. Maybe you're saving up some money for something. Hey, ladies, maybe you're saving up some money for an outfit, right? Yeah? Ooh, all the guys are quiet. Okay, guys, maybe you're saving up money for an outfit. (laughs) Maybe, guys, you're saving up money for a tool for the shed. Or ladies, maybe you're saving up, you know, for a Makita or a Ryobi or whatever it is for this shed. And God says to you, hey, I want you to take that money. There's someone you know, I want you to bless them. Being spirit-led is hearing that and being obedient and doing that. See, being spirit-led is being at church and you remember someone, something, someone's name is imprinted on your heart or, or it comes to your mind and you stop what you're doing in the busyness of your work life and you take five minutes or your day to pray for that person Maybe you send them a text message, you give them a call, that's being spirit-led. Being spirit-led is having a bad attitude about something. You know, oh, that person, they said this, and a bad attitude, and, and then the Holy Spirit says, hey, hey, that, that's not right. The conviction of the Holy Spirit, hey, you shouldn't be thinking about that. Whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is holy, right, think upon these things. The Holy Spirit calling you out. That's what being spirit-led is. See, being spirit-led is about, isn't about being out of control or... You know, just being uh, uh, loose and unprepared. Being, being spirit-led isn't about being some, you know, uh, cock a doodle do weird, kooky, crazy Christian. Any crazy Christians here today? <laughs> Not after that. You know, because so often we think, oh, spirit-led is going to be over here. You know, we're going to be doing this, you know, crazy. No. Simple. Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, come into my day-to-day life. It's about hearing God in any, every moment of your life, not just on Sundays, not just when the keys are playing, not just when there's someone with a microphone. It's hearing God in every day of our life and allowing Him to direct your paths. It's saying, God, today, Holy Spirit, I want to hear you. I want to be obedient to your voice, Holy Spirit, as you lead me, as you guide me. I need you, Holy Spirit. I want you, your presence your anointing to be upon me. We are to be spirit-led. Why is it important for us to be spirit-led? Well, it says this in Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. All who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. We can flip that the other way and say, maybe if we're not being led by the Holy Spirit, are we truly sons and daughters of God? And that's a rabbit hole we'll go down to it for another time. But come on, today at Elevation Hills, we are sons and daughters of God. We are being led by the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are following after God. My question is, when was the last time you were led by the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you woke up and said, God, today, today, Holy Spirit, I want to be led by you. Today, God, I want to hear your voice. I want to be obedient to your voice. If you heard his voice, if you hear the prophets of the Holy Spirit, when was the last time you were obedient? See, it's not just in hearing, it's also in the doing. Being spirit-led is in the doing, taking a step of faith, stepping out as he leads us. Let's embrace our value of being spirit-led. Today, as I finish up my message, as we end this series on vision, what if we took these values, these values of fun, of spirit led. What if we took the values that Pastor Marty spoke about last week of being adventurous and authentic and we applied them 
not just to Sundays. Oh, look, those are the values of Elevation Church. Uh, when we're in Elevation land, we do those things. What if we took them and applied them to every day of our life? What if we made them the filter through which we did life, the filter through which we lived life and the way we acted in our life, in our homes, in our marriages, in our workplaces, our schools, the way that we live. What if we did that? What if we paused and asked ourselves, hey, am I being authentic right now? Am I being the real me? It's not about putting up facades. Am I being who God has called me to be? Am I being adventurous? Is there a journey of adventure God is calling me out to? Is there a step of faith that God is calling me to? Am I being fun? Can I laugh at myself? Is there a joy? Is there a happiness that springs not from what's happening around me, but from this thing that is inside of me, God's Spirit? Do I let the Holy Spirit lead me? I pray as a church community that we would join in vision together, that we would join in our vision together to believe God, to multiply healthy local churches, to transform our cities. Who wants to see hills change for Jesus? Who wants to see the suburb where you live, where you work, where your kids go to school changed for Jesus, transformed? That we would create environments that inspire intimacy with Christ, relationship with others, influence in our world wherever we go, and that we would be, that we would live authentic, adventurous, fun, spirit-led lives. I believe church as we embrace the vision the mission and these visions uh, these values i believe as we embrace them individually and as a church god will bless and he will multiply our lives and god will bless and multiply our church let's pray this morning heavenly father we thank you today lord god for your presence here amongst us jesus we uh, we those values of fun and spirit-led today, Lord Jesus. We embrace them, Lord God. Not because we think they, they are good things, but because we have spent time seeking you. We have spent time in your word. We have spent time saying, hey, what makes us who we are? And these are the values that you have given us, Jesus. We thank you today, Lord God. In this place, hey, today in this place, maybe today God is calling you to fun to fun. Can I tell you what fun looks like in real life? It means having hobbies, having things you like to do. It means getting out there and doing things that are enjoyable. You know, it's not all about church, right? It's not all about this every single day of our lives. Let's be real, authentic. So, you know, fun for you is like culture and arts and all those types of things. Do it. If fun for you is camping going out and hunting and fishing and doing those things, do it. If fun for you is food and coffee and all those types of things, do it. It's good to have things that we enjoy in life. Jesus, today I pray over this church, God. Jesus, your freedom. Your freedom today, Jesus. God, that there is welling up, there is coming a day, Jesus. God, where there is an open heaven, Lord God, for us to say, Jesus, we're alive, Lord God. We're excited, Lord God, not because of what's happening, but because of who you are, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you that we are spirit-led, Lord Jesus. God, we're not waiting for the big moments. God, we're living in all the moments of life. And we know that, Jesus, you are interested in all of our life, not just our Sundays. Not just when we're doing church, but all of our lives. Spirit of God, lead us. Lead us today. Lead your church, God. Lead our families. Lead our marriages. Lead our children. Lead our workplaces, Lord Jesus. Would your anointing come upon us to lead us, Lord Jesus. We would hear your voice. We would know your voice. We would be obedient to step out of faith. Say, God, here I am. Jesus, lead me today. You want me to speak to that person? I'm going to speak to that person. You want me to send a text? You want me to say yes to someone? You want me to get bless someone's life? You want me to, uh, I need to change some attitudes in my life? Holy Spirit, I'm being led by you today. I'm going to do those things today, Lord God. Thank you, we're led by you today, Jesus. 
for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord God. Maybe today you're here, and as I've been talking about God and Jesus, and as I've been talking about Him today in this place, if I was to ask you, do you know Jesus? And the question is not, have you heard of Him or have you read about Him? The question is not, do you know about the stories of Jesus? The question is, do you know Him in a personal way? Has there been a moment in your life where you have said, Jesus, I believe in you? Where you have confessed with your mouth, where you have believed in your heart that Jesus came and died for you, rose again, is in heavenly realms, wants to have a relationship with you. Today I'm asking, do you know Jesus like that? And if your response would be, no, I don't know Jesus like that, I want to give you an opportunity right now right here in this moment to know Jesus like that, to give your life to Him, to surrender, to be able to say, hey, I want to live an authentic life. I want to experience the adventure of knowing Jesus. I want this, this, this heavenly uh, happiness. I want to be led by God. Today, I want to give you that opportunity. As all eyes are closed, as every head is bowed right now, would you do something for me? Would you do something it might take some courage. You might need to be brave. But there are many, many people in here that have made this decision. And they'll be so happy for you. They'll be cheering you on. Would you put your hand up right now? Just say, hey, Bronson, I want to know Jesus. I want to know Jesus in this way. I want to invite him into my life. This morning to say, Jesus, come into my life. Thank you, God. We're going to pray a prayer together, church. If you want to invite Jesus into your life, pray it with me as well. Dear Jesus, we thank you. You came, lived a perfect life, died for me. But you're not dead. You are risen. I thank you today. I am now risen too. I am a new creation. Come into my life. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name. God, has anyone prayed that prayer this morning today? I thank you that you would come upon them right now in a powerful way. Holy Spirit, let them know that their life is changed. Let them know that they are now on a journey with you, Lord God. I thank you this week. Transform their lives in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, come on, everyone said, let's give God some praise this morning.